I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from every fear those who look on him are radiant they'll never be ashamed no no they'll never be ashamed of this poor man
Our scripture for today is found in the uh, book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 12 through 14, 18 through 20, and 27 through 31. One body with many members. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, So it is with Christ, for in the one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, there would be, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work powerful deeds? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts and I will show you a still more excellent way. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. And as you are seated, I call your attention to your sermon notes found inside your bulletin. So we finally made it to the end of this sermon series, going back to basics, reigniting our spiritual lives. And so we must reignite these uh, basic experiences like faith, hospitality, love, and spirituality. And I have shared uh, this sermon series to encourage us all to realize that a true and deep Christianity starts in simple and basic steps. So this is important to know because we we live in a culture that often equates success with complexity and with intricate processes. But finding God in simple and basic experiences goes against the belief that we need to be a Christian uh, through, through difficult ways And this thing is moving that way. Speaking of difficult ways, stay, okay. So let me tell you why this is important. Um, In many places in the Bible, we find God's presence in, in the ordinary, in everyday experiences. Jesus himself, he lived a simple life, a very humble life. But he, and, and he often referred to uh, images that were simple and, and, and ordinary, like bread, like wine, like seeds, like roots, uh, like water. And, and he used these to teach very profound and spiritual truths. Uh, in, in all these ordinary things, he showed that God's presence can be found in the most basic elements of life. And that is why going back to basics of our spiritual life can produce a satisfying Christian life. When to complete the picture of basic experiences today, we will consider the importance of our engagement in missions. Missions is all about movement. But movement must be purposeful to fulfill its original design. So have you noticed the design of God's creation? Everything that he created has movement implanted in it. Everything. 
every single aspect of creation from the universe to the most simple aspect of creation has embedded in it the, the, the sense of movement. And we see all of, all of that in, 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 in creation. We can also see God moving throughout history uh, with a mission of heart, always with intentional plans on behalf of humanity. And then God moved through His Son, Jesus Christ, to fulfill the plan of redemption. And, and he, he came to us and, and dwelt among us through Jesus. And all of that was part of this cosmic plan to redeem, to redeem uh, the, the universe and His creation. And then God moved through His Son for three years, Jesus being here with us. And all, all, all that time, uh, He ignited the, the basic foundations of, of God's kingdom. And then God created the church. The church was meant to be moving constantly. It was meant to be in perpetual motion, pursuing a mission and fulfilling a purpose. And from day one of its inception until today, at this hour, the church has not stopped moving forward, advancing the kingdom of God. But movement without purpose leads to nowhere. Movement without a design creates confusion and creates chaos. Movement without a mission yields no fruit. So let's get serious about this basic experience of our Christian faith, which is mission. And if we want to reignite our missional nature, then we need to do at least four things. And the first one is to adopt a missional paradigm. In the body of Christ, we are many and we are diverse too. Each of us have been crafted by God with special and unique gifts we, we are designed by God to fulfill a special purpose. Not all, not all of us are, are, are prophets or are teachers or, or pastors or evangelists. Each of us have a different and unique gift given by God, and all of us contribute to the overall common good of the body of Christ, to the overall movement of the church. The, the, the point here is that we need to we need to discover that gift that God has given you. We need to discover what is the spe special function that God has given you as a member of the body of Christ. Because if you do not discover that, then that part of the body is not moving. It's not moving forward. It's not fostering life. And so it is important for us to know what are the gifts of God for my life? What is the special function that I bring to the body of Christ? What is the ministry that I need to fulfill so that the body of Christ can move together, me fulfilling my ministry, my way, my gift, and, and the other ones uh, also doing the same? I believe that the Spirit equips some to serve, others to lead, some others to teach, others to heal. But all of us, are here to reveal the love of God to a broken world. And when we do that, then we move the church forward. Now, the diversity uh, of our experiences and, and cultures and gifts, uh, all of that is actually a help uh, to, to, to make sure that the church continues its motion uh, towards the fulfillment of its mission. As a church, I believe we need to adopt this missional paradigm so we can celebrate our diversity, recognize the value of, in every member, and then move forward as one body, unified in Christ. And we do this for the sake of the mission that God has given St. Mark's Church. So, so we discover that function, that gift, that ministry to move the church forward as, body, as the body of Christ. So we need to adopt that missional paradigm. And, and here's the second, the second action that will help us reignite our missional spirit. Uh, reigniter our mission means that we must come to terms with our paradox. How can we be a church in, move, in, in, in movement, a church on a journey, if our physical address is static? Now, how can we be Christians that are on the move 
and yet our zip code addresses have not changed at all. While there seems to be an expansion of our influence as a church beyond the borders of our regions, our location remains the same. So we are Christians who deal with the paradox of moving while we are settled. And this is where the missional paradox can also have a negative effect. Because the reality of our static place, our static location, sends a powerful message to people that moving forward or changing directions is not a good thing to do. Because we are established in this neighborhood, this is where we are supposed to be, so I'm not, I'm not moving forward, I'm not, go, I'm not going to change anything, I am not going to step into, in faith into a new, a different future. And so sometimes our static location brings an, a, a negative attitude towards change, towards the sense of moving forward. Beloved, St. Mark's Church has been here since May the 10th, 1945, in this location. And from this place, this church has moved the world with powerful ministries. And also, some, in some periods of our history as a church, we have experienced uh, people not wanting to engage the world, people not wanting to move the church forward through missions. And sometimes being in the same location for so long has brought a sense of defeat and conformity and passivity, and, 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 and we just stop doing things. But our missional paradox also helps us believe that we can move forward in loving our neighbors and our communities, this region, and the world while being anchored in the love of God. And that's the paradox. We, we have to be anchored. We have to be deeply rooted in our relationship with God. Nobody can move us from that position. And that's the best position to be in as a church, anchored in the love of God, in our relationship with God. But we need to move forward. We need to make steps of faith. We need to look into the, into the future and say we are going after a vision as a church. And we need to do both and embrace that missional paradox. Now, the third action that, we will help us, that will help us reignite our missional spirit is avoiding a missional pitfall. As a people of faith, we need to be aware uh, of the pitfalls that, 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 that we need to avoid. Now, John Wesley, uh, the, the founder of Methodism, he understood the importance of this vulnerability when he spoke about his fears. He said, and I quote, My fear is not that our great movement, known as the Methodist, will eventually cease to exist or one day die from the earth. My fear is that our people will become content to live without the fire, the power, the excitement, the supernatural element that makes us great, thus become a dead sect, having the form of religion without the power, end quote. Have you heard about churches experiencing the spiritual hypo hypothermia? I shared this with you before. And, and, and let me describe those churches for you. Just, just like the human body, uh, that is experiencing hypothermia, the church begins concentrating its efforts to, uh, uh, to fulfill or to keep alive the most basic functions uh, so that it keeps itself alive. Uh, that is when churches enter on survival mode and try to save as much energy as possible, which makes them be very limited in the investments on the kingdom. When, when, when a human body enters in critical hypothermia, the energy is cut off from the extremities. So the first parts of the body to go are the extremities, the, 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 the hands, the arms, the feet, the legs, which is what produces motion, movement. And the same happens with the church when in spiritual hypothermia, they stop being the hands of Jesus. They stop being the feet of Jesus. They stop being the arms that are stretched out to embrace people in need. And that's what happens when churches fall into this pitfall of 
uh, spiritual hy hypothermia. They lose their missional focus. So St. Mark's, if we are to respond to God's higher call, then we must avoid this pitfall and begin focusing on our missional purpose. We must again become the most active body of Christ that uses hands and uses feet to reach out to this world, to reach out to this neighborhood, to, this, to reach out to this region. And I believe when we do that, then we avoid the pitfalls that are all around us. Now, the fourth and final action that will help us reignite our missional spirit is to make a missional promise. Beloved, the Great Commission is not just the great suggestion. I mean, Jesus not just suggested, well, if you want to go into the world, think about it, you know, pray about it, or, or, or if you feel like it. Jesus actually said, go into the world. He commanded his disciples to go into the world and make disciples of all nations, to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So this call requires more than a passing interest. It demands a great commitment. Jesus didn't just commission a few, the talented or the prepared he commissioned all of us. He, he expected all of us to, to respond to that great commission, to carry his message of hope and salvation and reconciliation in all the ends of the earth. But friends, the great commission will remain just words on a page unless we, unless we respond with our hearts and say, God, yes, I will go. Yes, as a church, we will go and respond to the great commission with a great commitment. And I believe God is calling churches to make a missional promise. We must commit to, to this calling, not just as an occasional act, but as a lifestyle. It, it needs to become a second nature for the church. We, we must not make it an occasional thing, but a, a, a really uh, second nature for us, whether in neighborhoods, workplaces, or this borderland region, or across the world, the gospel must be proclaimed, and this church must make the promise of, uh, to God that we will embrace the Great Commission. The Great Commission is this church, a church that is willing to say, Here I am, Lord, send me, send us. And let God hear our promise as we make a great commitment, stepping out in faith, courageously carrying the love of Christ into a broken world. So these are the actions we have focused on this morning. We must embrace a missional paradigm. We must consider a missional paradox. We must avoid a missional pitfall. And we must make a missional promise to God. So let me finish with a reading of Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 11 to 13. The Bible says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So in this verse, Paul tells the Christians that, that God has given us different gifts to, to, to all of us, some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be teachers, evangelists, or pastors. And the reason why was because the body of Christ, the church, need, needed to be built and strengthened through the, to, through the diversity of these functions and operations. Every single one of us has been given a unique role in God's plan. We are not all called to do the same work, but we are called to respond to our individual callings, and then fulfill the purpose to help grow this church for the glory of God. But it doesn't stop there. Paul says that we do this until we reach the unity in the faith and become mature and rich in the fullness of Christ. And this means that our work isn't just about an individual growth. It's about coming together as a church. It's about 
being the church together and, and building it up in the love of God and in the strength of the Spirit of God and in the, in, in the grace of Jesus Christ. So, so let's embrace the role that God has given us and use it to build up His church so that together we can, we can continue fulfilling our purpose. Beloved, I believe God designed St. Mark's United Methodist Church to be in perpetual motion, in perpetual movement. For there's something profoundly sacred about being a church on the move. And it is our sacred responsibility to advance the kingdom of God starting in our immediate community and all the way till the ends of the world. And that is our missional destiny. And we need to respond with a promise to God that, yes, we will fulfill our missional destiny. Let us pray. And God, we pray that in this church you will find willing disciples to say, yes, this church should be on the move, should be on perpetual motion, fulfilling the plans of redemption that were established by Jesus. Today we say yes to you. And we embrace our missional destiny. In the name of Christ, amen.
again, church. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. You're worthy. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Always worthy. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. something else church pretty simple just sing like this with us and I will never be shaken I'm standing on a firm foundation I will never be, I will never be shaken I'm standing on a firm 